So is, are we waiting? No, we're going. Start we're going. Was that yeah. the beginning? Oh, <laughs> well, let me ask you. Thank you for taking the time. I, I'm Amanda from uh, Guide for Moms on YouTube. Crazy Amanda <laughs> Reacts. And I'm excited to talk to you about this. I really loved the story. I really loved it. And I read that you um, actually first came on as like a, a story consultant. And that, you know, so I wondered, you know, the storyline did you have input in just more of like character development? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, my main role in uh, Red Shoes and the Seven Dwarfs has been as a, a voice, uh, yeah. voice director, uh, which means I work with the actors. Then we have a lot of Hollywood A-list actors working on the, as voices. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked with them to record and get their characters. But I, I will say unofficially, I had a lot of input in the story by, by just the fact that the directors and producers know I have some experience there and would always come to me with like questions, like, what do you think about this? And what do you think okay. about this? And um, while, while I, I did not, you know, um, write the script for this, I wanted it just to have some influence there. And they were very giving in that um, and, and reactive to the comments and ideas that I would have every once in a while. But it's really their movie, and I was just happy to be a part of it. I found out about it because the character designer on it was okay. a good friend of mine from Disney. And um, he was my inroad into it. And when he introduced me to the producer and director, I fell in love with the pitch of what this movie is about, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. That it's, you know, it's a funny, raucous kind of comedy, but it also is heartwarming, has a really great message too about positive body image. And I was, I was really happy to be a part of that. So that was later on my list, but since you brought it up about the body message, I mean, that was one thing I felt was so powerful, the, the body image, but also, you know, what's on the outside, not, you know, not really what's on the outside, exactly. but the inside. And you having that experience, you know, being an animator and we're, you know, with princesses yeah. and animating princesses, you know, would you like to see more of that moving forward? Like if, with princess development being more, having more, I guess you say flaws or just being more real and not perfection, more imperfect. Perfect. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, and it's not about flaws at all. Because well, yeah. I, I think that's our head around as a society is that it's about we're all beautiful in our own way and that there is different images that uh, of, of who we are, reality, basically, yeah. that we need to really get accustomed with is, and understanding that we're all beautiful. Yeah. And, and it really is about the inside that matters and not the outside. And and we know those things, but our society and, and our world, we don't really support those things. And so this movie does that really well. Um, Snow White goes through a whole journey and including Merlin too, uh, her romantic co-star, co he goes through the similar journey too of understanding himself mm -hmm. um, about what beauty is and how important that is and how much they invest who they are behind that look as opposed to who they are inside and the, the giving quality that they should have. So I, I gotta say that was the thing that attracted me to it. I have three daughters myself, and that's the thing that uh, I said, when I learned what it was about is when I went to the directors and producers and said, I'll help out however you want. I mean, I'd love to be a part of this. And they said, we need a voice director. Can you do that? And I said, sign me <laughs> up. Yeah. Oh, totally is making me tear up. A little because <laughs> I do I have a daughter too and that was like the big thing you know watching it with her and her and in having those discussions with her I mean we we have that you know but just having a movie that actually portrays that was pretty important you know have you had discussions oh. with your daughter about or your daughter is oh, about it all of them but my youngest daughter um, has had the biggest struggle in her life and um and uh, you know, I'm really proud of her, though, of how she's come into now her young 20s. She's turning 21, actually, this Friday. And um, her head on her shoulders is so uh, how she has come through, you know, some really tough times because she's also very tall. And so she, they, the kids mm -hmm. used to call her giant, you know, and um, how that how she had to struggle through and work through those things and then come to be the woman that she is now. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm so proud of it. I didn't, wasn't expecting all this, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> All right, let's back up to funny stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick I Warburton, stuff. he does a voice in it. I love working with Patrick. He did Kronk and Emperor's New Groove, but he uh -huh. did the Mamir in it. We just had a great, yeah. great cast. I'm so happy with the cast that I was able to work with. Well, that Patrick was one of them I was going to bring up because, oh my gosh, was he perfect for this? And, you yeah. know, and he has that voice that you you and you're just I mean I said I was like oh there's the <laughs> guy that's, that's what I yeah. said that's how I know you know well and Jim so, Rash I think a lot of people are going that's that guy yeah, from Unity yeah. he's the principal on Unity <laughs> yeah it's funny because uh, yeah we know them usually as something else first but uh -huh. when you see this movie Snow White and the Seven uh, Drawers I think what people are going to go away with they're going to remember Jim Rash now as Prince Avaraj yeah. oh then, yep I think this <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a defined side of that people are going to see him in this. And at first, you know, at first I didn't even catch on to that. I was like, Avra. And then when they said something about average, I was like, oh. Right. <laughs> but, so did you take in any of the casting? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, I suggested Patch Warburton. You yeah, did? I did. Oh, um, spot on. They didn't have anybody for, they were kicking around some uh -huh. ideas for Magic Mirror. But, you know, he could easily go really dark, that character, yeah. because for the villain and all that. But what Patrick was able to bring to it is a levity and a warmth to that character that was really necessary. And I'm so happy that he came yeah, on board. All right. I have one last question, Nate. Yeah. Yeah, I have a, so it was uh, about, you know, the voice direct many times. I, I would think it would be tricky to direct some of the scenes and especially like when the dwarves go back from like human form to dwarf yeah. form and, and things like that. So, then what did you do like differently when directing? Well, those scenes? luckily, I had um, largely I had a lot of sequences that were storyboarded, given to me by the director of the film, and and we talked about those things. And then I would take that to the to the actors and say, okay, just so you know, when you say this line, you're looking this way. Uh, you know, you're more of a dwarf, and when you say this line, you poof, uh -huh. you've changed into the more of the human form. And so that took some kind of coaching and understanding for the actor. Um, but then when we didn't have storyboards, it was really just me trying to explain uh -huh. context always. Okay, like there's this great scene where Chloe, uh, 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 Chloe has to talk to um, Sam Claflin. Now she's, she's Snow White uh, uh -huh. herself. And then she, she's also, he's also having a conversation back and forth and um, getting them to understand and they're not in the room part. So getting them to understand the emotions and how they were playing off of each other, it starts kind of glib. And then like any good scene, it gets yeah. deeper as it goes. So how to escalate that and when to escalate that in the dialogue into a more of an emotional or vulnerable place for the actor. Um, that's really what I, what my job is to get them to understand how to modulate well, that. Well, I think you did great. <laughs> I loved it. And thank I thank man. you for taking the Time to talk to me. I was not expecting I know, the tears at all. There. <laughs> but thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs>